Hello everybody, welcome. Do you guys think you're a real Porsche fan? Well, you're not. This is. And today, we're going to replace this fan on my Boxster. So I believe this process of diagnosing and replacing these front radiator fans will be pretty similar for all modern water-cooled Porsches. We're going to start this process by talking about how you can troubleshoot problems with these fans. Then we'll get into exactly how to get in there and get this guy out. Pretty simple process, should only take an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. You're most likely to have a problem with one of the front fans if you notice the temperature gauge climbing slightly higher than normal in traffic or when the car is idling. At higher speeds, the car has enough air flowing over the radiators that the fans aren't necessary and it'll stay cool. Porsche also designed the cooling system on their cars with quite a bit of redundancy. There are two separate fans with two separate circuits and four separate relays. Now this means that it's really unlikely that the fans are gonna fail totally. What's more likely is that one fan will fail completely or most likely one fan will fail at just one speed. So this means that the other fan is working fine and the car is still getting cooled down, but it's not getting cooled down as much as it normally would, which is why the temperature gauge just climbs slightly. It won't spike, it won't cause massive overheating typically. Uh, it will just cause a slight increase in the temperature, it's something that you might recognize as abnormal. In my 986, normal might be the temperature gauge on the 8, in the 180 and I noticed that when I was stuck in traffic or idling for long periods of times temperature gauge started to climb closer to the zero in the 180 it's not serious overheating not enough to damage anything but it's hotter than it normally runs other problems with the cooling system cause dramatic increases in temperature if the plastic coolant tank cracks and it leaks coolant, the car could seriously overheat. A stopped thermostat will definitely cause this car to seriously overheat. Broken water pump, seriously overheating. So it's kind of nice that if you just see a slight increase in temperature, it's almost certain that the problem is with one of the front radiator fans. So if you notice a slight increase in the running temperature when the car is at idle or in traffic, the first thing you can do to test and confirm that it's one of the front fans is to start the car and turn the AC on. When the AC is on, both fans should always be running. If they're not, something's wrong. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Okay, the car is on and the air conditioner's on. What I can do is I can just Take my hand and slide it right under the front bumper here and I can feel the fan blowing out air. It's very easy to do it. I obviously don't want to stick my hand up anywhere because I don't want to get my hand caught on a fan blade. Hopefully that's obvious to you. Um, but it, yeah, it's very easy to feel the air just blowing out there. It's pretty obvious. You'll know it's, it's there if you're feeling it. If you don't feel any air blowing down when you put your hand right here, then that fan is not running. So on this side, I can feel it. If I move around to the other side, nothing. So that's how I knew that I had a problem. My next step was to go around and check the relays to see if it was a problem with the relays. Each of the fans on the left and right side of the car have two relays. One relay that controls the low speed and one relay that controls the high speed. That's a total of four relays, two on each side. If any of those relays are bad, then that side fan will not work at a set speed. The relays for all of the front fans are located on the driver's side. Right here is the fuse panel. And if you go back right above there, 
will be the location of all the relays. They'll be visible. So I'm gonna stick my head in here and you'll see the relays uh, up top there. So here are the relays under the driver's side dash, basically. Uh, this is the clutch pedal, just for reference. And then you have four relays. The right high and low speed, and the left high and low speed. Those four control the front fans, and you'll notice that they're identical. So you can switch them out and see if that solves the problem or if it changes which fan is not working. Another way of testing the relays is to remove the relay and then take a small piece of wire and insert it in the bottom and the top like this. This is jumping from pens 30 to 87. If the fan and the ballast are working, jumping it like this should activate the fan at this speed. So no amount of swapping the relays or jumping the pens on the relays got the right low speed fan to turn on. But I was able to get the right fan to turn on at high speed. Now this means that the motor of the fan, the fan itself, is fine because it will turn on and spin at high speeds. But the ballast is broken. And I know it's the ballast and not the relays because I've already tried swapping out all the relays. Now you can buy and replace just the ballast. They are, do commonly go out and a lot of people choose to do it because you can do that without removing the fan or doing any work like that. And it's also a little bit cheaper. I'm gonna replace the whole fan unit, however, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because the ballasts are very expensive on their own, and the fan comes with the ballast. And also, if you replace just the ballast, you have to splice it into the fan, and I just feel like that is a recipe for a short or a problem later down the road, so I'd rather replace the whole thing. So to get at the fan, we're gonna start by taking the wheel off. Now we need to remove the fender liner. Uh, it has these little plastic rivets, which I kinda hate. They're a pain to get off. Find you can take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry up on the head here just a little bit. And once that's done, some needle nose pliers can get in underneath that and pull it out. Something like that. And it just pulls out there. Uh, these guys do tend to break like all the time though. So it's a good idea before you start this project, when you buy your fan or whatever you need to replace, that you also buy some of these replacement clips since they're only a few cents. Just keep working your way around. There are several of those clips here, 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 and there are a few little plastic nuts that you've got to take off. These are 10 millimeter nuts. You also have to come around here and remove a few Phillips screws. And another one of those annoying snaps. There we go. So then that's all free. And I've seen people just peel this back. But it's honestly not difficult to remove entirely. Right, forgot about that one. There are a lot of these snaps and clips, so just be aware as you're working. You probably won't get them all out the first time. 
this guy who's hidden behind the shock. There we go. So you'll see you have to remove these uh, clips and screws as well uh, on the front. So you might not necessarily realize that. This is the clip behind the shock absorber and there's also a spot right here that you gotta get. Okay, now we can get at this fan or at least start to get at it. All right, so fan right in there. We got to get all this stuff out to get access to it. I'm going to start by just unclipping this hose. This hose is actually a drain tube to the headlight. So we're going to unclip it from this cross support and then we're going to remove this cross support. Cross support just attaches with two 10 millimeter nuts. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter box end wrench on the other end. Which you probably can't see, but trust me, it's a 10 millimeter nut that attaches it to the body over here. There we go. There's a this metal bracket here that we've got to remove. All right, next. Underneath here, there's a 13 millimeter bolt. It's another 13 millimeter bolt down here on the bottom, closer to the front of the car. On the underside of the car, these are the bolts that we're getting at that have to be removed. Additionally, there is a screw here and a screw recessed right here that attach the bumper to this bracket. So we have to remove those two screws as well. And an identical 13 millimeter nut right there. Two clips, one here and one here. To remove these, you've got to pry this back part up a little bit and then just push them that way. There we go, that's one. All right, there is a T25 screw right here. Let me go ahead and pull that off. And we're making progress. Unclip this hose here from the top. Yes. There we go. That's it. And wow, my theory about the ballast, what is this crud on it? It's kind of nasty. There we go, that just pulls off. So the electrical connection for the fan is up here on the top. So that's the electrical connection. If you just squeeze this clip here on the top and bottom, there we go. So that's the fan's electrical connection disconnected. And now we can remove these clips. They're the same as the ones before. So we'll pry the back part forward a little bit. There we go. Aha, that's it. All right, we've got the fan out and on our workbench, 
Now, when you buy a new fan, it will probably just be the fan itself and not the fan shroud. So we've got to remove this fan. I'll show you how to do that and I'll also show you how to replace just the ballast. So to start, this right here is the ballast with the electrical connection. The electrical connection is tucked up on the top of the fan and the ballast is down on the bottom of the fan right here. If you choose to replace just the ballast, you can do it without removing the fan. Uh, unfortunately though, you do have to clip these two wires. So uh, I am not replacing just the ballast, but if I were working underneath the car, I would cut this black wire and this green wire. I would strip these back like that. And the, and the new ballast would come just like this with two longer leads that you would then uh, splice on here. I definitely recommend you solder them and splice them on really thoroughly because that could be a potential problem later on. So that's how you would replace the ballast if you chose to go that route. There's really no way to replace the ballast without cutting these two wires and splicing on the new ballast. If however you decide to replace the ballast and the fan, it comes together as a unit. The first thing you have to do is you have to re remove this plastic cover. Before you do that, you'll notice there's an arrow pointing to where the wires come out, so make sure you install it the same way. There are just two plastic tabs that you have to pry out. Something like that. And then this comes off there. Once you have that off, use a T25 socket and remove the three screws holding the motor in place. Now, you'll notice that the wires on the motor come out on this little bump right here in the fan shroud. So when you reinstall the new motor, make sure the wires are lined up with this bump, but the fan shroud just lifts away. You can remove the old fan motor and replace it with a new fan motor that includes a new ballast. So that's it. That's the whole process. You put everything back in the way it came out. Be really careful, pay attention to everything that we took off because you've got to put everything back on. Um, it's a real bummer if you forget the fan ducting or something like that and you've got to go back in there and put everything back in. Uh, but yeah, there's really no secret to it. As you notice when you pulled it off, some of the things, especially that cross brace, does do take a little bit of prying to get back into place, but it's really just a matter of putting it back on like you took it off. All right, so I took it for a drive and both fans now come on when the AC is on, which is great. And it doesn't seem to be climbing in temperature like it was before. Didn't do tons of driving and it's not super hot outside, but initial results, it seems like it's fixed. I also sat in a Costco gas line without turning my engine off. And if you've ever been in a Costco gas line, you know that's a lot of idling. So, seems like another successful fix. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like the video because I have a lot of other exciting projects that I hope to put up on this channel soon. Thanks again, guys.